Hello guys, this video is long time overdue. It's a video about RPG7 rocket launcher. Basically, my experience with it and how to use it efficiently in the field. So first of all, construction. We have such a reusable launcher. We load the rocket from front. We have foldable mechanical sides. We have also side rail for optical side. We have simple single action trigger mechanism. Cross bolt safety. So you just insert the rocket with your thumb, apply tension, safety off, shooting the rocket. That's simple. Now the rocket consists of two parts from point of view of you as a user. So you're taking the warhead and then you're taking the propeller, the starting motor and you must put those two together. On the rear of the rocket we have a safety cap. Always before inserting the rocket in your bag make sure that this one is loose because sometimes they are stuck and under stress it's not very good to and uh, I'm doing them when, when it's just stuck, so you go for another rocket, it's mess. So always make sure that it's on just lightly. lightly. Now keep those safety caps on, even in backpack, because here we have a primer that set off the whole rocket. So if you fall down, if you hit on it hard enough, it might actually... So, set the rocket off. Now we have the starting motor that we screw on. Always make sure that you screw it almost all the way when you just can't enough. Yeah? There is still a little gap which is okay but really apply tension. Now this rocket launcher is muzzle loaded. So we insert the rocket from the front. Here we can see the primer, so this is where the hammer strikes, the firing pin strikes. 180 degrees, we have this bolt in front. This is very important because this bolt needs to go into this U-notch. So you're loading from front, inserting the rocket, you see no resistance. Just at the end, you press, you see the screw attached here and now the grenade launcher is ready to fire. Now you would just cock the firing mechanism, press the trigger, rocket go off. Now the types of rocket that can be used with this system. One of the biggest adv advantages of, of, on RPG-7 over all the single use RPGs is that you can choose from different types of warheads. We have the tandem warhead, which I don't have here which is great against uh, active t protection on tanks and armored vehicles because it has small shape charge in front that basically get got rid of the dynamic protection and then the main charge. Here we can see the lower one. It's uh, like a medium type, basically f uh, second improvement over the original rocket for RPG-7. It's called PG-7M. It's a heat projectile with cumulative charge and it can beat up to 7 cm of armor. On top we have the updated one from 1989. It's called PG-7L. It's also heat and it can beat up to 993 mm of steel. So basically 9.3 cm of armored steel. The top one it's like the most commonly used currently. Also we have the TBG7 which is thermobaric one, just a huge container with thermobaric substance and then we have the OG7 which is just a small rocket with a lot of shrapnel that insert all the way into the launcher and it's used against infantry. Now how do we prepare our backpack for combat? So we do the important step that I mentioned already before. First we unpack the 
rockets from the box. They come like this. So you would need your multi-tool. You cut all that. Open the rocket. Here we can see this, this type is the first generation one. So basically we have first generation. You can recognize it by those ribs. Then we have the second generation with better cumulative characteristics. And then we have the last generation of the basic heat projector. With, those, with this first and second generation, it's important to remove this cap before firing. But even then, if it hit on solid enough surface, it will explode. You can see that it's very carefully packed, packaged, since it's rocket, so the handling, the transportation, it's kind of important to have it in good condition. You remove this paper, this paper as well, that's protecting the nozzles. Remove it as so. This tape is absolutely normal, you just keep it on as it is. This rocket is from 1967, so that's an interesting fact. Now, assembly the backpack. So you unpack your rocket. You make sure that the bottom protector is nice and loose. With this latest generation, you don't need to remove the safety cap. You just fire it as it is. So I will put those aside. Here we have the backpack for the helper of the shooters. The two backpacks for the shooter himself and for the helper are actually different. We insert it in a so. Now this is how the counter nail looks out of the box for the propelling charge that basically after setting the rocket off there is small explosion in the expensive chamber which is here on the RPG. It propelled the rocket seven meters in front of the launcher and then the main motor starts. So you will not get burns on your face. It's like safety measure for the shooter and that's why there is no shield necessary on RPG-7 unlike on the Panzerschreck for example. So the propeller charge comes in container like this. You break it as so. And before going to mission, you will just unwrap it. Here we have the motor, the propeller charge. Charge, it also have the stabilizing fins just under the propeller, propelling charge. And as this, you would put it back into the cover. Then you will take this whole assembly, insert it as so. So in combat, when you need the propeller, you will just, like so, assemble the rocket fire. Why keeping the protective cover? It's very simple, because when it's raining, this gets swollen with moisture, or it can become inert, or it can, became, it can become very hard to insert into the launcher. That's why you still keep some level of protection over it like so. So yes, getting to the position, taking out the rocket, loose this one up, yank it out, screw the motor on, and your rocket is ready to fire. Now to the differences in the two factory backpacks for the helper of the RPG-7 shooter and the RPG shooter himself. The helper have a free cell backpack with free rockets. You can close it as so. One, two, Put the flap over and it's optional if you want to have it secured on one or two straps, like this. Here we have the padding. This is Bulgarian version, so it's slightly up updated. We actually have some padding, we have shoulder pads, stuff like this, so you can kind of wear it even with body armor. So this is the backpack for the helper with three rockets. 
Now the more interesting part. This is the smaller backpack for the shooter himself. This one is only for, for two rockets. You can see two cell, two rockets inserted. And here this big long pouch is for the cleaning rod, which is very specific for RPG-7. I don't have that one available on me at the moment. So we just substitute it with basic big diameter brush for some tubing. RPG-7 get very dirty, so over time, as you shoot it, it became hard to insert the new rocket, so you really need to pay attention to the maintenance of the system, and also the compound is extremely corrosive in those rockets. So always wash it out with uh, hot water, then use oil, brush it all out, and keep the RPG-7 in working condition. Working condition on RPG-7, it tends to destroy firing pins a lot. On the launcher itself, it's very easy to take the trigger, the trigger group out of the RPG-7. All, all of what it requires is just to drive this pin out, squeeze it, drive it out, and then the whole assembly just fall down. Here we have the firing pin. It's a vertical one and you can see a surface so you can unscrew it very easily this rpg7 with circle 10 it's made in bulgaria just for the interest so the very specific thing on the shooter's backpack and that's why on any occasion you get you should loot it out because people don't know usually it's this small pocket with a spare part. So we take it out. Here we have two complete firing pin assemblies. Also the key to unscrew it, little rod to drive out the trigger pins if you feel like so, and then this stuff that help you compress the springs again inside the trigger group, but this is very unnecessary. The most important what you want is the key for the firing pin and the two spare firing pins. So thank you very much guys. Under video write me any of your question about RPG-7. The self-destruction on RPG-7 is at 970 meters. The rocket self-destruct itself, but also there are ways around it. You can disassemble the rocket pull the auto, auto destructor out, there is just many magic that you can do with RPG-7. So thank you very much guys for watching and see you in the next video.